today is race day and I completed, <laughs> I won't say I ran, I completed the, uh, the, mar the, the half marathon that, that I had entered. It was technically originally when, when they put it out, the, the 2020 Lighthouse Loop half marathon here technically uh, starts in, in what's Port Orange, even though it's on the other side of the Intracoastal, goes through Ponce Inlet, Wilbur by the Sea, all those beautiful little ocean towns on the peninsula south of the Dunlawton Causeway. Uh, I, I did my absolute best. It, I, I signed up for it, as you know, and it was originally scheduled to be done yesterday. And because of the virtual nature of the way we're doing things here in 2020, I did it today. And that was because of the little hiccup, little schedule issue that I had where um, I, I kind of messed up the beginning of the week and I wanted that extra rest day. Uh, so anyway, uh, come race time, uh, the, the initial, my initial start time, what I wanted to do was start off at, at about 7 a.m. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think I actually shoved off to, to start my watch at about 7.25, 7.35, somewhere in there. I started off and, and it was unseasonably warm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can build up all these excuses all I want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that to you guys. I'm going to tell you the successes I had, what I did well. And, and we'll talk about some, a few other things. It didn't take until the end of, of my race today for me to come up with this. Um, during the race, I'm just thinking, first of all, two things going through my mind. Well, there's a lot of things going through my mind, but the, the two big things that I, I don't want to hang on emotionally is screw October racing in Florida. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm just straight done with it. If it's anything more than three miles, I'm done with it. I, I mean, you guys remember when I started this 12 weeks ago. So that's what, back to September, back to August, back to July, right? Or, or maybe it was just that that first week of August. Um, I've run in some brutally hot weather. You know this. I complain about it just about every video. But racing in it is a different thing. And, and virtual racing is is a much more difficult thing on top of that i mean there's there's no one to chase there's no one in front of you to chase and and, and catch and hunt down there's there's no water stops with people cheering you on this race is awesome because it goes to benefit the high schools so each water stop is usually sponsored by one of the high schools and they have the high school kids there cheering you on handing you water um there's none of that um, so anyway, it's, it's very difficult on top of the fact that it's a race in October in Florida during unseasonably warm weather. And the final thing, the, the, the two big things, racing in October, I'm done with it. And half marathons, I'm done with them. Like I, I, I'm just thinking like, maybe I'm just not a half marathon runner, you know, and, and I need to. I need to let that sit, but that's where I'm at. You know, that emotional response is never again with an October race. And I don't know if, if I'm going to do a half marathon again. Now I've had some success with, with the shark bite. Um, and, and by success, I mean like 30 minutes faster than what I've done in this race twice in a row. And last year I didn't run the shark bite because it's, it, I've explained this. It, it, where it is in New Smyrna, it's kind of an kind of odd spot, and it's hard for Darlene and the boys to get down there to root me on. And um, but I've done better in that race. It's in January, so the one year I think it was 40, 48 degrees, fifty degrees at at start, and the next year I think it was just under sixty, and there was like a light mist rain at the start vastly different than it feels like of 88 today. You know, when I finished uh, the race, I, I took a picture of, of my weather app. It, it was a feels like of 88, which isn't very fun, obviously. Um, and I don't want to use excuses. But the first two half marathons I've ever run, I, I ran a 158 
and a 153, I think. I, I, I have them here. I, I could look through and, and check them. Um, but this race, I've, I've gotten uh, two and a half hours, and then today I got two hours and 19 minutes. And that was struggle city to get to 219. Um, I mean, I would love to say that I didn't stop. I would love to say that. That's just not the case. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I stopped multiple times. I walked a large portion of the last mileage. Um, and I, I wrote all my, my miles down. In fact, one of the good things, we'll switch to that now. We'll start talking about the good things. Um, I set a, a 10K personal best. So the first six miles, you can see from my sheet, the first six miles, I'm, I'm rocking it. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't on pace for an hour and 45 minute half marathon. So I, I was off pace. My, my pace needed to be eight minutes a mile. I hit 808 or 812, 808, 801, 821. Then it starts slowing down, 843, 845. And then the seventh mile, 934. So I set a, a personal best in the 10K of 52 minutes and two seconds, which for me, that's pretty good. Uh, I only beat my personal best by, I think it was 20 seconds, eight, 16 seconds, something like that. I think it was 52, 18 or something. So then the wheels started falling off and, and I felt pretty good um, in general, those first few miles. Um, but, but then it started, the wheels started coming off. 934, 1008, 1034. Then I started, unfortunately, walking a little bit more. 13, 14, 1458, 1451, and then the last 10th, uh, 1342. I got to the point where I was, um, I was, okay, just do, do a little bit, run. And my hip just locked up, like all the way down my leg. Um, it almost felt like muscle cramps. It didn't feel like the previous issue, it felt like the the muscles in front of it, almost like they were cramping up, um, like from my hip down through my quad. So it wasn't it wasn't very fun. But you know, I mean, that's that's the way it goes. Um, and a after the race, I was I was pretty emotional about it and upset with myself and, and disappointed. And and thankfully, you know, the boys and and Darlene were very supportive and, and very proud of me. And, um, you know, it, it, the one thing that my wife said to, to me was like, listen, you know, you've done it in the past where you didn't listen to your body and you pushed through and you were out for, you know, six weeks, you know, six or eight weeks and you're hobbling around on crutches for the first two weeks. And she's like, you listen to your body, whatever, you know, you're, you're not a professional runner. You can't push yourself to the point where you can't do what you need to do around the house. And that's kind of one of the things that, you know, the, the title of, of what I'm doing is Run Dad Run. You know, I am a dad, I am a husband, I am a, a career person. When it comes to these plants and these races, that struggle between that part of my brain that is go, go, go. Um, you know, she, at one point she also said, well, you know, like, no one says you have to run the whole thing. I'm like, no, no, like my brain says I have to. Like if I didn't run from from stripe to stripe, I failed. And that's that balance that I have to deal with. You know, like I have to look at the failure and take the positives from it. And that's, you know, that's the 10K personal best. And so, you know, maybe if I, I, I don't do half marathon for a while, maybe I, you know, look at a little bit of a longer race. Um, or maybe I, I do the shark bite in January, which is virtual, um, which I really don't want to do. It's really tough to do these. Um, but I, you know, I want to be able to take the positives from them. And, and that's what I said to the boys. Like, you know, I, I, I feel a little bit discouraged and, and disappointed in myself, but I wanted you guys to see that I signed up for this race. I paid for this race. I started it and I finished it. You know, you look on my, my GPS tracker, it says 13.2 miles. It tells me how long I took to do it. And, um, you know, that's that's an accomplishment. It, I, I'm proud of the fact that, that I accomplished it and I got it done. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself and trying to figure out, you know, what I'm doing wrong in my training. You know, I did run 
in July and August and September. So uh, you'd think, okay, you're used to the heat, you can do it. Um, you know, and, and you could list a, try and figure out a bunch of reasons. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to harp on that. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And maybe that's, maybe that's the new time for me. You know, maybe those other two were, I was in better shape or I was two years younger. Maybe that's just the way it is. So at some point, you know, you're not going to be able to do what you did when you're 38 years old, um, now being 41. And, you know, that's also that part of my brain, you know, there's, there's that 17 year old football player in here, you know, that, you know, that thinks that it doesn't matter. You, you just go out and you do it and you push as hard as you can. And if you get hurt, so what? You can't possibly get hurt. You know, there's that little part of my brain in there too, um, that, that thinks that way. And I have to constantly fight it to remind it that I, you know, I have a mortgage and, and two little guys that are dependent upon me. So I was trying so hard not to let little things bother me, you know? My headphones stopped working. Last time I had my hydration vest on, my phone must be something with my sweat or something. The screen is acting like it's it's trying to be unlocked. So at some, some point, the, the iPhone just locks the screen. And that was really bad because at one point I wanted to text Darlene, this was a, a training run, that, hey, I changed my route and my phone, I couldn't get it to text. So I didn't want that to happen again um, in this situation. So I put my phone in my armband, in my backpack, and I thought it was working fine, but within the first, man, it must've been the first four or five miles, my headphones started shutting off. They just shut off for no reason. I'm like, what the hell? So I go to put it on and it says, connect to Bluetooth, go to your settings and connect to Bluetooth. And like, she's saying that over and over again while I'm trying to get my phone out of my backpack, out of the armband. And I'm like, that's really annoying. I'm about to throw these things because I, I was starting to, starting to really feel the heat. So I, you know, switch it back on, put it in my backpack, get it back on and head off. Maybe three minutes later, they they turn off again. They shut off. They just sh straight power off. Boop. Like, what the? Are you kidding me? Like, I felt bad because I was in front of the, some condos down there on Atlantic. Like, uh, the the middle, like one, one you, you can cross the, the street and you're on the beach. Um, and I'm cursing these headphones, man. I'm like, fucking motherfucker. Are you fucking kidding me? And I, I look up and there's like, you know, some woman with her coffee and her cigarette enjoying the morning view. And there's this pissed off old, old dude screaming at his headphones. So anyway, um, so I, I, I try and fix them a second time, get them reconnected on my phone, got my music playing, set off, start running, and they do it a third time. And like, I pulled them out of my, my ears and just put them in my hand like, and cooled off because I didn't want to throw them, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's the point I was at. These are like $130 truly wireless headphones that like, um, probably shouldn't just throw into the ocean. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I woosah a little bit and, um, uh, decided I was, just, you know what, I'm just going to put my armband on. So I have the armband band. Thankfully, I, I decided to do that. I don't know if that was uh, ESP or, or some kind of uh, Nostradamus effect or something like that, but thankfully I had my armband, so I just put on my armband. So now I have my armband and I have my hydration pack um, and, and my headphones start working now. They're, they're not malfunctioning anymore. So something with that bag being, or with the phone being in that bag um, messes it up. I don't know how it changes some settings or it, it's, it, I, I've, I've done it twice now and both times it's malfunctioned. So, um, that tells me I can, and if you remember the, the video I showed you, there's like a breast pocket in the strap that my phone just barely fits in. Well, that didn't work on that training run. That was causing some problems or I thought that was causing the problems. Um, so I took it out of there and put it in the back and it still caused problems there. So uh, just in general, I, I guess I can't carry my phone in that, in that 
hydration pack. Something, for some reason, is causing it to screw up. So anyway, back to the reason I brought that up is um, at, at, a, at a certain point, I, I, the, the way the race works, I start basically on, on the ocean side under the causeway, run up to Atlantic, which is the first street off the beach, run all the way down to the, the park on the end of the peninsula, turn right, um, and then head north up a street called Peninsula, and that's right where the lighthouse is. So you basically loop around the lighthouse at, at more or less the southernmost drivable point other than the park, and then head north up Peninsula. And basically what I did, you, long story short, you cut back through to make sure you're off the, the roads because there's no sidewalks down there. Then you head over the causeway and, and that's where you finish the race. Um, at, at a certain point, I see Darlene and the boys coming and this is the first time I see them cheering. And mentally, I'm like, I'm beyond wanting to quit. This is mile, I'm already halfway. So this is mile six or seven. I think it was six, just after six. And I see the car coming. I'm like, I think that's Darlene. I can't see her right now. I cannot see. I am too weak right now. I <laughs> will, if she's like, hey, how you doing? And sees like I'm struggling and goes, hey, get in the car. You don't look well. I'll get in the car. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I can't, I can't see them right now. So I'm like, hey, how's it going, guys? And I like kept running and they're like, wave, hey. You know, I'm like, yeah. So like that first, uh, first time I saw them, I was like, I am not in a good spot right now. <laughs> I need, cause I had already considered texting her at this point, like a hundred times, like this sucks. This is the worst. I can't do this. Like all those mental checks that you have, I had already run through them. And then I see her, I'm like, if she says like, get in the car, I'm done. Like, <laughs> so thankfully, she, she drove past and I kept pushing forward. Um, but then the hydration pack was just, it was too much. It was at, at that point I wanted to, to shed some gear. Um, and I was kind of concerned about the hydration pack, you know, carrying that extra weight. It's not much. It's only like 24 ounces and, and the weight of the vest and, and some energy chews and things like that. But yeah, so I called her back. Luckily, the way she had done it, she had looped around and she was just about to the causeway when I called her. And when she saw my name pop up, she jumped into the turning lane, smart, thinking, oh, he might need me. I can't go over the causeway just yet. And that's why I said to her, I was like, hey, can you come get this damn hydration pack? Like, I, I need this off my back right now. Um, and she's like, yeah, absolutely. So I, I kept plugging along, saw her, we pulled into the side street and I had given her a big Nalgene with a bunch of, of liquid in it. Um, and, and I chugged some of that, you know, I, I stopped running at this point, take the hydration pack, put it in her trunk, chug some of that, refilled my one bottle, my soft bottle from the hydration pack. And that's what I took with me. I took that. So I refilled it. And then I was like headed out later. I talked to her. Um, I thanked her for not saying get in the car. She's like, I was about to. She's like, then you drank some water and like you got some color back in your face and I knew you're all right. Um, but I was about to tell you to get in the car. I was like, thank you for not doing that. Cause I would have, like, if you said you don't look well again, like if you said you don't look well, I definitely would have gotten the car. And that was mile eight. Cause I remember thinking that point only five miles left. I've run five miles a hundred times. I can do this. No problem. Um, and I set off from there and within that next mile and it kind of, kind of reflects in my time. I have like a, a 1034, which is okay. You know, cause like that first mile after I saw them and refilled, like I expect that I had a 1008 before that. Um, and that, that next mile was 1034. Um, and that's when I started walking. That's when I was like, I'm. I'm done. I can't, I, I can't do this. Um, my hip was killing me and they drove past again. Um, and I had my shirt off and she's like, Hey, Hey, hey are you all right? You're doing good. I'm like, yeah, my hip's no good. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to walk it. Cause I had texted her back at one point that there was three miles. I'm going to walk the last three miles. 
Um, and so she came to, to find me and she said, hey, give me your shirt. I was like, no, I need it for the sun because the sun is out at this point, like full, not full height, but it's, it's high enough that like it's at my back. Um, I have my shirt either here or hold it in my hand. Like I ended up putting it back on because I had, I had a quite a while to go with the sun right behind me, blasting me in the back. So I didn't, you know, I really was trying to avoid a sunburn on my full back. So, um, so I, I kind of mixed in some runs and, and at one point I cut in and I was like, all right, I'm going to run to that, that stop sign. Like I gotta see, like, maybe it's because I've, I've walked now. Maybe I need to break up some of this lactic acid or something. Like maybe I just, and so I kind of like did like an eight minute pace. I don't know, maybe, maybe an eighth of a mile or something like that. And I got there and, and cut across the sidewalk that was across the street. And I was just like, no, nah, it's not happening. My hip is just like locking up. Like my legs, my calves are starting to cramp. My hip is starting to cramp. So I was really bummed out and really upset with myself about all of it. But anyway, you know, I, I, I said, all right, I'm going to run up to the corner and then I'm going to walk. Uh, then I did a little jog and, and get to the, to the causeway there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to tackle this causeway. I'm going to do it. I didn't get to run over it last year. And I, I've done training runs on this causeway. So I know I can run over it. Um, but I was like, all right, I'm going to try. I made it like, man, 20 feet maybe. And I had to like grab the rail, like, cause I was like, I felt like I was going to fall over. Um, so anyway, I, I walked up the rest of the causeway, took a, took a picture at the top which you, you'll see, uh, you, you'll see at the top here, uh, as a, as a screenshot. Um, and then I ran down the other side and, you know, walked and jogged and walked and jogged and ended up finishing, you know, uh, three, 13.2 miles, two hours and 19 minutes. And, um, you know, it's tough. It was, it was one of the toughest things I've ever, I, I've, I've ever done. Um, you know, it, it took me a long while to, to stretch and cool off and, and get in some some fluids where I felt like I could stand up even. Like I sat on the grass to do my stretches at this park over on the river. And you know, I'm I stood up to do like different stretches. I was like, oh, I gotta sit down. Like the blood just rushed into my legs, you know. So it was, it was, uh, uh, it was really tough to get back to it where I could feel like I could stand up and the boys were great. Um, Darlene is so patient with me. I got really emotional when I got into the car I, where, where we went, there's a splash pad and there's one of those like beach style shower things where you push the button for your feet or, or for up top. Um, and I soaked off there, uh, just, just rinsed off, just stuck my head under it for like three pushes of the button and walked back to the car and, and, uh, got all my gear in the trunk and, 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 uh, just got really emotional thanking them and, and um, apologizing for, for letting them down. And, uh, I'm getting emotional now, um, for not, not being able to, to do as best as I, I thought I could and, and not hitting my goal. And, um, you know, and I explained to them that, Although I had to walk some of it, seeing them on those stops really helped me finish because, uh, you know, to me, like I wanted to show them at a certain point that first time I saw them was so important to me. So I wanted to quit so bad, but that first time seeing them, uh, I was like, you know what, you got to, you got to show them that if you sign up for something, you got to finish it. Um, that has to be the message. You know, if, if, if I don't get an hour and 45 minute, if I don't get hour and 55, if I, if I don't get 205, if it takes me all day, I want Jacob and Cooper to see that if you start something, you finish it. You sign up for something, you do it. Um, and it's so, so important for me to see them when, when they just drove by. Um, cause after I saw them, I was like that, that has to be what I do. I cannot not finish this. Um, and you know, it's, it's struggle. It's hard. It's so difficult. And it's the thing that, like I said, it's 
probably going to be the reason why I do another half marathon. It's because of how hard it is to fight your brain and keep going. Um, and you know, and, and you can get your body to do so much and you got to listen to your body, as I mentioned earlier, but being able to push through, um, mentally is, is probably what's going to make me in the long run, in the end, probably what's going to make me do it again. Anyway, I did it. it wasn't pretty, <laughs> um, but I got it done. So those of you, Hal Higdon, novice two, uh, half marathon plan. I like it. Only thing is, um, if you are keeping up your running and you're keeping up your fitness, this is probably too long for, for me as a dad, as a husband, as a career guy working, you know, the J O B 12 weeks is probably too much. If you're generally keeping your fitness, you probably want to whittle this down. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do, especially if I spin around to do the, the shark bite half marathon in January or some other virtual, I, I've been thinking about doing a virtual with, uh, with my brother-in-law, maybe just putting that challenge out to him. Like, Hey, since you're in Seattle, and I'm in Florida and everything's virtual anyway. Why don't we just sign up for some cool race? Uh, I don't know, but if, if I turn that around, um, I'm probably going to whittle this down to six weeks, maybe even just do four, maybe one month of training. You know, if I keep my fitness up between now and then, that's probably what I would do. And same thing for those out you who, th those of you out there who are already have high mileage, you probably already have done a bunch of these and you probably know what, what works for you. But as a novice, novice too, um, it might be good, you know, for your first couple, but even still, it, it's 12 weeks is a long time. Um, and, and I, I would whittle it down. If, if, you, if you guys have a chance to look at one of these plans, maybe find one that's 10 weeks, eight weeks, something like that, because it, it, I, I think this is probably a month too long, especially for an October race. Um, I, I was, thankfully I'm doing this this time around. So I, I felt an obligation to both you guys and myself because I wanted to do the best I've ever done. First of all, because I have screwed it up and it kind of held me accountable. Um, you know, I've, I've missed some races or missed some training runs and, and some cross trainings. And, uh, but I think I did a lot better because I was holding myself accountable um, because of you guys. So I, I appreciate that. And it, it really helped me a lot this time. So um, I'm going to do some more videos. Um, I don't know what my next thing is going to be. I'm going to probably do a turkey trot 5k, something like that. Last year I did one on the beach. It was awesome. But 2020, man, <laughs> who knows? So I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. I'll, I'll let you guys know what I'm going to do. And I'm probably going to do a 5k training plan. And I'm probably going to look for one that's four to six weeks uh, right now, as it is, I guess Turkey Day is only four weeks away. So um, I'm probably just going to take a couple days off, um, maybe just mix in some three mile, four mile, five mile runs, and then uh, maybe do some speed work for a 5K because I think that's the direction I'm I'm looking to go here in the near future. Is no more crazy long runs. So uh, maybe try to set some more personal bests on 10Ks and uh, see what I can do on on Turkey Day for for a 5k. So I really, really, really appreciate you guys hanging with me. I love you guys so much. All the feedback that I've been getting friends and family, um, comment, like, subscribe, you know what to do. I appreciate all of you. I really do love you guys. It, it means a lot to me. We'll uh, see you on the next side, uh, on the next one and, and see what we can do. Right guys. Love you. See ya.